Welcome students to lesson two of the coast topic. In this lesson we will be exploring how rocks get destroyed in nature and from this understanding we will learn about how coasts retreat. Please write the date title and learning objective. Have a pen and paper ready to learn. Okay, time to review prior learning. Please write 1 to 14. Put the words in the gaps and then mark your answers. Game time. 1. Wind. 2. Friction. 3. Circular. 4. Friction. 5. Slow down. 6. Elliptical. 7. Breaks. 8. Swash. 9. Backwash. 10. Constructive. 11. Swash. 12. Destructive. 13. Backwash. 14. Destroy. Give yourselves a mark out of 14. If you got 12 or more, you have mastered the idea of waves, which we learned about in the previous lesson. To introduce this lesson, I'm going to show you a photo, a mystery of sorts. Use your knowledge to answer the questions about the photo. Here it is. It's a rock that's been fractured in several places. You can see in the distance, there's icy cold surfaces of mountains. So this is the mystery of the broken rocks. Nothing has moved it. Nothing has hit it. No human or animal has touched it, and yet it is broken. Why do you think the rock is cracked? How can rocks break without moving? And finally, what happens to water when it turns to ice? Think about these questions. Write down your thoughts. Pause the video while you do so. So in this lesson, I'm going to uncover the mystery of these broken rocks. So I want you to make sure you've written down your ideas and your answers to these questions so that as I reveal the mystery, you can see if you were right in your prediction. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the answers to two important questions. Number one, how can rocks break without moving? And number two, how do coastlines retreat? Let's do this. Keywords of today. This type of rock allows water to travel through it. Materials that allow water to go through them, in this case rocks that allow water to go through them, are called permeable. So permeable rocks allow water to go through them. Clay is a common one. By contrast, materials that do not allow water to go through, and in this case rocks that do not allow water to go through, are called impermeable rocks. An example would be granite. Please write these two keywords and the definitions. You may wish to draw a diagram of each to help you understand it. Let's do this. The first idea is how do rocks break without moving? And this is all to do with something called weathering. Weathering is a process in which rocks are broken down in situ. That's I-N space S-I-T-U, which means without being moved. Let me show you how this happens in nature. There are three ways in which weathering can happen to rocks, in which they can be worn down. And one of them is called biological weathering. Please write the subtitle and underline it. If you go into a desert or a field or any landscape at all with plants, what you'll notice is the plants have roots and those roots grow into the ground. And when roots grow into rocks, they can actually break them. Here's how. Rocks have weaknesses called joints within them, as you can see here. This is especially true of a type of rock called sedimentary rock. S-E-D-I-M-E-N-T-A-R-Y. Sedimentary rocks. They are formed by layers of sand and mud building up on the ground over time. And after hundreds of thousands and to millions of years, 
the weight of the sediment on top of itself presses that sediment together with such force that eventually it becomes rock. And this sedimentary rock forms layers and it ha has cracks within those layers and between them. So you end up with joints like you see in this picture. These joints are slightly weaker than the rest of the rock. That means that when a tree grows on the surface of a sedimentary rock, or even another type of rock that has cracks in it, the roots have space with which to pass through. And as the tree gets larger and the roots get wider and longer, the pressure exerted by the roots on the rock causes the rock to crack apart over time, much like you see here. Even small plants over time can damage rocks in this way, but larger trees can cause significant damage, even breaking larger rocks. Now you may have seen this in the street, on a pavement. Trees that are planted along pavements often have their roots going under the pavement and cracking the pavement. That is biological weathering. But it's not just trees that damage rocks. Animals could also weather rocks. Rabbits may burrow into the ground, causing weaknesses in rocks, allowing them to break more easily. That's also biological weathering. Any living thing that damages rocks is called biological weathering. However, chemicals can also weather rocks. You may have visited a city with old buildings or buildings with limestone. And you may have seen a picture such as this, a famous old statue, which looks worn away. The facial features don't seem to be as clear as they used to. They might have holes or dents in them. And this is caused by the rain. It's called chemical weathering. Subtitle, underline it. Here's how it happens. Rainwater often contains small amounts of dissolved acid. When carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere, small amounts of it may dissolve in the water droplets in clouds, creating something called carbonic acid. It's why sparkling water tastes different to still water. Sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere, caused by coal power stations and volcanoes, may also dissolve in the water droplets in clouds. And that can create a slightly stronger acid called sulfuric acid. And when these raindrops fall and they hit these rocks, they can dissolve the surface like this. And we call this chemical weathering. And it is a very important cause of damage to rocks around the world. Finally, the solution to our mystery. Mechanical weathering. Mechanical weathering, also known as physical weathering, works like this. Here is our broken rock. And you can see snow all around it. And the clue to this process is that it's very cold. Mechanical weathering, of which the most common type occurs in cold environments, happens like this. Here is a rock. During the day, it rains and that water fills small cracks within the rocks. In the right climate, that water might freeze overnight. And this is important because when water freezes and forms ice, it expands. And so much like the roots of the plants in the cracks in the rock, that expanding ice cracks the rock wider, like this. So now the crack is wider than it was. During the day, the temperature rises, the ice melts, the crack is larger. So it rains again. And now, when that rainwater freezes, the ice is even larger and cracks the rock yet further. Eventually, the crack gets so wide that the rock fractures or breaks. This is called freeze Thaw weathering. Thawing, T H A W, means to melt. And freeze thaw weathering happens when the temperature at night drops below zero and the temperature in the day drop, rises above zero. 
freezing and thawing repeatedly until the rock breaks. These are the types of weathering, mechanical, biological and chemical, and they combine to damage rocks around the world. And by weakening rock, they allow the coast to be affected by the sea even more than it normally would. So, now we're at the point of the lesson where we go to understand how coastlines retreat. Before we do, I'm going to ask you a question. I'd like you to answer it aloud. Why does water damage rock when it turns to ice? You should have said that when water turns to ice, it expands and consequently enlarges cracks. And then when this process repeats, the rock may break over time. What is the name of this process? You should have said freeze thaw weathering. Good. Finally, what are the three types of weathering? You should have said biological, chemical, mechanical. Okay. And the second most important question of this lesson is how do coastlines retreat? This process is called mass movement. It means when cliffs or hills collapse due to gravity. First, let's look at how mass movement occurs when it affects impermeable rock, that is, rock in which rainwater cannot pass through. The first type of mass movement is called a rock fall. And it is so called because the rocks on a cliff fall downwards. This type of mass movement, rock falls, happens because, as you can see here, a combination of biological weathering from the grass at the top, chemical weathering, eroding and wearing away the side of the rock, and mechanical weathering, freeze-thaw, widening cracks such as this one, they damage the rock enough that it collapses straight downwards. So a rock fall is where rocks go fall straight downwards. And this happens when rocks have horizontal bedding planes. That is, the joints that I told you about before are directly horizontal. And that makes rocks collapse straight down. At the bottom of this cliff in Dover, the sea is damaging and weakening the rock, as we will learn about more in a future lesson. And over time, this cliff collapses straight down in a rock fall. However, when a rock and its geology looks like this, and the bedding planes are at an angle, rather than being vertical or horizontal, a landslide occurs. You see here, the different types of weathering. They weaken the bedding planes, these joints between the layers of rock. Eventually, the weight of the layer of rock on top is enough to break the bond between that layer and the layer beneath, and so it collapses, like this. So when rock has diagonal bedding planes, landslides occur. Both of these types of mass movement occur with impermeable rock. They have nothing to do with water absorbing into the rock. Rather, they have to do with water and plants and chemicals weakening the bedding planes in between the layers. However, mass movement that affects permeable rock occurs in a different way. Have a look at this first one. This is a mudslide. A mudslide happens when impermeable rock here, called bedrock, is overlaid by a layer of soft soil, permeable rock. When it rains, the water is absorbed by the soil and the soil becomes heavier. If that soil is on a hill, eventually the soil will become so heavy it can no longer hold its own weight and it will slide down the hill. And so it's called a mudslide. Eventually, all that mud will spread out at the bottom of the hill, forming something called a lobe, this widened area. Lobe, L-O-B-E. A mudslide might look like this in real life. They can be devastating to people living at the bottom of hills. And they happen because water saturates, which means fills up until something can hold no more water, 
like a sponge, the soil, and the soil gets so heavy that it collapses. Finally, slumping. Slumping occurs when a whole area of coastline or of land is made up of permeable rock or soil. When this happens, the whole coastal area fills up and saturates with water. And because there's no bedrock, no impermeable rock beneath the soil to hold it up, the whole region of the hill collapses. And we call this a curved slip plane because it collapses in this curved angle like that. And it may end up forming steps like this or like this. Slumping occurs in coastlines that are made up of permeable rock or soil like this. By contrast, landslides and rockfalls occur on coastlines made up of impermeable rock that can't absorb water. So the next time you're by the coast and you look at the land facing the sea, look at the shape of it, look at any damage that's happened to the coastline and see if you can work out which type of mass movement this is. The overall effect of mass movement is that coasts retreat. They go backwards, backwards here or backwards here. Or if I go back, they go backwards in this direction or backwards in this direction. This cliff is retreating. Time to assess learning. I'm going to show you six pictures. You need to identify the type of weathering. So write one to six and then write the type of weathering, chemical, biological, mechanical. Go. Okay, mark your answers, please. If you got five or more, excellent, you've really understood this. Second assessment of learning. Please write one to eight and put the words in the gaps. Go. Number one, mass movement. Two, slumping. Three, mechanical. Four, Landslides, five, freeze thaw, six, biological, seven, chemical, eight, impermeable. Give yourselves a mark out of eight. I hope you got eight out of eight. Excellent. Now we have to really embed this learning by helping you practice it. I'm going to show you a couple of questions. Please answer them using the understanding you've gained from this lesson. So freeze thaw weathering, number one, if you remember, that was all to do with ice and how the ice melts and what happens to water when it becomes ice. So explain the first step, and then explain it step by step, how that leads to rocks breaking. You should have had this. Second question, mud flows, a type of mass movement. You should have said the word permeable, like this. Please mark your answers. Add any corrections in green, give yourselves a score out of the total, if you got seven or more, you've really understood this lesson. Well done. I'm very proud of you for having reached this point. Thank you for joining me in this lesson. Next lesson, we're going, we're going to be exploring the three main processes that affect a coastline. And these processes explain how the sea shapes the coast. Join me then.